How would you evaluate this expression, the inverse of the hyperbolic cosine of 1? What is that equal to? Now, when dealing with inverse functions, x and y are switched. So what we have is the y value, and what we're looking for is the x value. In other words, hyperbolic cosine of what number is 1? That's what we're looking for. So how do we figure this out? Well, there are different ways in which we can do this. Recall the hyperbolic cosine function is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. So we could replace this with 1. That's equal to y. and we could solve for x. Now looking at this equation, you could find the answer intuitively. You know that anything to the zero power is one, and one plus one over two will give you one. Therefore, this must be e to the zero, because that will give us one, which means x is zero. So the answer for this problem is going to be zero, thinking about it in an intuitive way. But fortunately, there are formulas that we could use to evaluate the inverse hyperbolic functions. So here's the formula for the inverse hyperbolic cosine function. It's equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And you need to be familiar with the domain. The domain is from 1 to infinity. So you want to make sure that this is in the domain, which it is, before using that function. So now let's use it. Let's evaluate the hyperbolic, the inverse hyperbolic cosine function of 0. So all we got to do is replace x. Actually, this should be a 1, not a 0. All we have to do is replace x with 1. one squared minus one is zero the square root of zero is zero plus one we get one the natural log of one is zero so that's how we can confirm our answer simply using that formula now let's look at another example go ahead and evaluate the inverse hyperbolic sine of one Now, there's a formula that we want to use, and here it is. The inverse hyperbolic sine of x is equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. So it's very similar to the inverse hyperbolic cosine function. The only difference is instead of a minus sign, we have a plus sign. So now let's substitute x with 1. So this is going to be ln 1 plus the square root of 1 squared plus 1. So this simplifies to the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 2. So that is the exact answer. But if we want to get the decimal equivalent of that, we can plug it into a calculator. And that's going to be about 0.88137. And we could confirm this using the exponential function of hyperbolic sine. So we know hyperbolic sine is e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. This is the y value, this is the x value. So if we were to take this value, plug it into x for this equation, we should get y. And that's how we can confirm if we have the right answer. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's evaluate this at this point. 
So this is going to be e raised to the 0.88137 minus e to the negative 0.88137, all divided by 2. Go ahead and plug that in. You may want to put this in parentheses. And don't forget this negative sign right here. I got 0.999995, which is approximately 1. So that's how you know that you have the right answer. You can check it with this formula. Now here are some other formulas that you want to add to your list. So you have the first two, but you want to add these four other equations to your list of formulas if you have this on the test. By the way, uh, going back to the inverse hyperbolic function, hyperbolic sine function, the domain is all real numbers. X can be anything. Now, for the inverse of the hyperbolic tangent function, the formula is 1 half natural log 1 plus x over 1 minus x. And the domain is restricted on the open interval from negative 1 to 1. So it doesn't include negative 1 and 1. But it could be anywhere between those two values. Now for the inverse hyperbolic cotangent function, it's very similar to the previous one. It's 1 half natural log. Now it's going to be x plus 1, which is the same as 1 plus x, but on the bottom it's x minus 1 instead of 1 minus x. Now the domain for this is going to be negative infinity to negative 1 union 1 to infinity. Next up we have the inverse hyperbolic secant function and that's going to be the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared divided by x. The domain for that is going to be 0 to 1. So we have a bracket at 1. 1 is included, but not 0. If we put a 0, it's going to be undefined in that fraction. Next, we have the inverse hyperbolic cosecant function. It's going to be ln. It's actually very similar to this. But instead of one fraction, it's broken down into two fractions. According to my textbook, it's 1 over x plus the square root of 1 plus x squared over the absolute value of x. And the domain is negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. So the domain is all real numbers except 0. So those are the inverse hyperbolic functions that you want to be familiar with and their corresponding formulas.